Another wonderful town in the south of France to visit is Uzès. We're in Languedoc, which is just to the west of Provence, typical of the region, and a very charming town. The main street has got some little craft booths set up almost every day, and the old town is a pedestrian zone, as usual you'll find in these beautiful villages in the south of France. There's some upslopes and downslopes, but it's a fairly level, small, old town. Road around it follows the route of the original medieval fortified wall. So this is one of those limestone towns that is really well preserved. And the arcades around the main square create a wonderful ambiance, a place to shop, a place to eat and drink and just hang out. This main square, Place aux Herbes, has been the center of Uzès ever since before the Roman days, back when it was a Gallic village. It's right in the heart of the old town, a fairly large space with these plain trees all around that were planted to provide shade. Sometimes in the summertime it'll get hot, but we're here in the fall and the weather is perfect. You can see it's shirt sleeve weather for some, and the families are out, but it's not a very crowded day. We're here in the middle of the week. If you come on a Saturday, there's a large outdoor market that takes place in the town, but on a weekday, it's really pretty quiet, especially when we're here in November. And this main square is surrounded by the arcades, these kind of loggia with the cafes, with the shops. Originally in the 17th century, there was wooden structures around the main square. Limestone is a great building material in the area, so it makes it convenient to construct these classic and immortal buildings. Nice fountain in the middle of the square. Just a place to relax. You'd want to just drop anchor here for a while and hang out, get a drink. There's nice restaurants around the square as well. And then of course there are the little streets that come into the square that are ideal for shopping and meandering. When you're visiting any one of these beautiful small stone villages in France, one of the most interesting activities is simply strolling through the little lanes, the little alleys. Don't worry so much about the history, the dates, or who lived in what building. Just enjoy the view, appreciate the history that these buildings have survived 500 years, 600 years made out of this very sturdy limestone. It's a small village, just eight and a half thousand inhabitants altogether in the area. And the old town is just about a half a mile across. And yet big enough to keep it interesting for several hours, you're not going to get lost. Note the baguettes tucked away in the stroller, Bonjour. the staff of life here in France, the staple food. You will certainly see some local families out for a stroll, and you get the feeling that you're in a safe zone. There's no apparent danger to be found here. Perhaps it's a remnant of the history with the old encircling wall in the Middle Ages that protected this town from outside invaders, and today envelops it in a cocoon of security and peace and harmony comfortable feelings that are increasingly difficult to find as we travel in our modern world. It was nice that we had the services of a local guide who could stop and point out some of the history of various buildings and lead us so we don't get too lost. But you can do this on your own. It's so small, you won't get lost in this little town. But if you've got a chance, take the guided walk. As we walked around with our small group and our local guide, it seemed like we were about the only tourists in town, mostly locals out for a stroll. Although it's a small town, there really are a couple miles of these narrow pedestrian lanes that are so inviting. There might not be shops or restaurants on many of them. They're residential, occupied for over 500 years with many of these original buildings intact. You'll probably run into some friendly people, maybe they're fellow travelers or local residents, responding to the vibrations of this calm town. It's a great place for the aimless wander that the French called the flaneur. 
It was the French back in the 19th century who perfected the art of walking for sheer pleasure, where you're just walking along, alert to your surroundings, observing even unimportant details, not worried about your destination, but enjoying the journey. This casual walking strategy is especially easy to pull off in Uzez because every little lane is interesting. It's not like a place where you've got some dead ends or some dark and dirty little alleys you want to avoid. And you'll find shops scattered throughout that are sometimes rather funky with their individual personalities. No chain stores in the old town. There's even an antique little motor scooter that still runs, something like a symbol for the city. Of course, there's a lot of history attached to this 2,000-year-old town. This became an important area for the ancient Romans about 2,000 years ago because there was a good supply of water, a big natural spring in the area. You do get a beautiful view across the valley where the water came from when you stand on the edge of the old town. It's a verdant and lush natural landscape out there and they needed to bring that water about 16 miles away over to their city of Nîmes. And thus they built a aqueduct, a long canal, mostly underground and above ground at the famous Pont du Gard and all the way on into Nîmes. And the water came from this area. So it was an important settlement for the Romans. They continued their occupation right up through the end of the empire, about the middle of the 5th century. And they developed a civilized and tolerant urban life, contrasted with a more strict regime in the Frankish north. For example, Jews were accepted as part of the community through the late Roman times, and it wasn't until Christianity arrived in the early 7th century that Jews were expelled from the region. In the early 8th century, Uzes became a fortified town and a bishopric under the Archbishop of Narbonne. A cathedral was first built here about a thousand years ago. What we see today, this present cathedral, dates from 1652. One of the unique structures in town is La Tour Fenstrel. It's the bell tower next to the cathedral. It dates from the 12th century in the Italian Romanesque style. It's the only round Romanesque bell tower in France. If you look carefully, you'll see the windows do get smaller as you go up to give the illusion of greater height. The tower and cathedral are the first sights you see while driving into town. The facade you see was added later in the 19th century. The other fascinating church in town is Saint Atene, built in the 1760s in the Italian Jesuit style, reminding us that this region was more Italian than French in those days. That church is on the ring road that goes around the old town, and you'll find that road is also a very interesting place to take a stroll. It's much busier, obviously, especially along the west edge of town where you'll find lots of shops and restaurants. This part of town is nicely shaded by what looks like a tree tunnel. This is a long row of plane trees, a popular variety that grows fast and provides lots of shade. You'll undoubtedly find some vendors with tables set up for things to sell, maybe old books or maybe it's arts and crafts on another day. There's one particular spot along this road that's most charming. It's Place Albert, and there you'll find cafes and also the tourism information office. So if you want to pick up a free brochure for a walking tour or a map, that's a place to check in with, and they can help you find a hotel if you're looking for accommodations. A tip on selecting your meal, you might consider the plat du jour. Most restaurants have got a special of the day, and it would be a good price, freshly made, and you don't have to wait very long for it. <laughs> you can see why locals enjoy hanging out at this special place. Plus, Albert is easy to find. It's at the north end of the road going around the old town. I had a lovely meal in this bistro with very good service. You'll find more restaurants along that encircling boulevard and perhaps a little bit less touristic than those in the old town. You can see how well olives grow in this region. They're thriving practically everywhere you look. 
this elegant mansion called the Hotel de Baron de Castile is built in an Italian-esque style with some Egyptian influence. Built towards the end of the 18th century, it resembles the town hall that was built in 1772. A thousand years ago, Uzes became for a while the most important dukedom in France. And that same noble family currently has the 17th duke still reigning today from this same castle. The architecture is kind of a summary of the building history of France. It expresses the Middle Ages, the Gothic, the Renaissance. There's touches of the 17th century and modern times are all there. And yet the ensemble is a harmonious blend that's very pleasing to the eye. This castle is open to the public as a museum with the paid admission. Inside the castle museum, you'll visit the Gothic chapel with its superb stained glass windows. There's a wine cellar and some apartments dating from the time of Louis XIII through Louis XVI with original furnishings. It seems that all lanes lead back to the main square, the Place aux Herbes. It's not really a square, it's an irregular shaped plaza that is the main gathering spot of town. There are a few other attractions here. There's a candy museum. There's a medieval garden. You can go inside the cathedral if you like. And then in the outskirts, you'll find some chateau to visit and a few other small museums. But at the top of many a visit's list is just sit back at an outdoor cafe at the Place aux Herbes and enjoy yourself. Look at the sights, people going by, drink some wine and have a meal. The arcades run around the entire circumference of the Place, creating open spaces within a sheltered walkway, formerly used as the main place where merchants would sell their goods. All we have left to do now is find our way back to the meeting place and join up with our driver at the van. And we'll show you once again some of this peripheral boulevard that goes around the old town. It too is a fun place to be walking and shopping, perhaps find a restaurant. Take a final look as we drive by. And so we very much enjoyed our visit to this little town of Uzes. It's somewhat off the beaten tourist track. It's not as famous as Arles or Avignon. That's one of the nicest things about it. It's slightly less touristic. And we had a good look at it thanks to our local guides, Provence Reservation. And it's a package tour. You can get it out of Avignon and they have several other locations. In our case, it was a full day trip by van from Avignon over to pont du -Gar which we've also shown you in another movie, and on to Les Beaux, which we'll be showing you in yet a different film, and this wonderful visit to Uzes. We got to take one more drive around town on departure. Nice view of that old bell tower next to the cathedral, driving around the city once more to review the sights. If you don't have a car or a tour driver, it's not that easy to get here. There's a public bus that comes up from Nîmes or over from Avignon, it takes about one hour, but there's no nearby train station. So it's really ideal to visit on a guided tour. We have many more movies about Provence and the south of France in our collection. We'll be taking you to the stone village of Le Beau, have some crepes, down to Nice, the beach, the old town. We'll see it during the daylight and take you back there at night. We'll be visiting historic sites and meeting the people. Pont du Gard, ancient Roman aqueduct. The quaint village of San Remy will charm you on market day with street music. You'll see shop dogs and ancient arcades. The daily joy of life in the streets is one of our specialties. We'll do some downtown shopping and enjoy traditional recreation. All the best of Southern France. Look for it in our collection.